The bicycle is part of everyday life around the world. Millions go to work, school or the shops on a bicycle. In recent years, the bicycle has drawn interest as a vehicle that is good for the environment and for health. Japan's first bicycles were made by former gunsmiths around the 1870s. Mid-20th century innovations aimed at women gave rise to a special type of bicycle for mothers with small children. This time on Japanology Plus, we'll explore the relationship between the Japanese and their bicycles. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. It's just as well that you never forget how to ride a bicycle because this is the first time I've been on one in years. Anyway, this is it, the epitome of uncool, your Komono Garden Japanese shopping bike, ubiquitously known in Japan as a Mama Chari. There are literally millions of these things on the road and they account for something like 80% of all bicycles you'll see in Japan. Let's get started with a look at how the bicycle came to Japan in the first place. Today, annual production of bicycles in Japan is about 9 million and rising. Bicycles are used for sport, recreation, and commuting. The bicycle was originally invented in 1818 in Germany. The earliest bicycles did not have pedals. They were push bikes propelled by pushing off from the ground with your feet. In 1861, the pedal bicycle was invented in France. Not many years later, the era of the bicycle dawned in Japan. At the end of the 1860s, Foreigners in Japan started riding around town on bicycles from their home countries. Until then, the only vehicle Japan had was the palanquin. The convenience of the bicycle was soon recognized and imports began from the US and Europe. But bicycles were very expensive, costing as much as a luxury car would today. That led to the rise of a bicycle rental business. Thanks to the popularity of this service, bicycles spread across Japan. However, as many of the customers were unfamiliar with bicycles and used them roughly, rental machines often broke down and needed repair. This is where gunsmithing skills came in handy. Gunsmiths already knew how to make steel tubes and smaller parts like screws and nuts. When the First World War cut off bicycle imports, there was a rapid surge in bicycle production in Japan. The mainstay of production was a very tough, practical bicycle, which had a rack at the back for carrying cargo. In addition, bicycles were used to pull trailers. In those days, bicycles were mainly used for work purposes, and the riders were mostly men. Our guest on this edition is Masayuki Hasebe of the Bicycle Museum Cycle Center. After a career in bicycle road racing, he worked for a major manufacturer developing and designing bicycle components. These days, he's a champion of everything to do with bicycles. Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I can see from your attire that you're not a casual rider. I commute by bicycle and ride up to 40 kilometers a day. Whoa. OK, shall we get started with our little tour then? Let's get going. OK.
This is the city of Sakai, an area known for a high concentration of bicycle-related factories. This area is home to burial mounds from the 4th and 5th centuries. Back then, blacksmiths gathered here from Japan and elsewhere to make the tools needed for digging. Their skills were subsequently applied to swords and other bladed implements, and then, centuries later, to bicycle making. First, we visit a typical Japanese bicycle shop next to Sakai Station. Okay. Here's the road bicycle section. Oh, right. For all these different models, most of the parts were made here in Sakai. I mean, for example, what kind of parts? The key parts all come from Sakai. For example, the crank here and the crank set. To go faster or to make it easier to climb hills, you have gears and a derailleur, the chain and the brakes. All of these key parts are from Sakai manufacturers. Only the frame is foreign. OK, I mean, there's literally must be hundreds of companies that make frames, I'm sure. Yes, but they all use parts from Sakai manufacturers. Hmm. This section is for a certain type of bicycle known as a mamachari. Oh, oh. Today, about 80% of the bicycles in Japan are mamachari. They were developed in the 1960s and targeted women. Until then, most bicycle riders in Japan were men. The mama part of the name refers to mothers. Chadi is a slang word for bicycle. One iconic feature of a mama chadi is the basket on the front. On earlier Japanese bicycles, items were secured on the rack at the back. It was easy to pop things into a basket, and so this type of bicycle was great for everyday shopping. The Mama Chadi also gave Japan a new look for bicycle frames. The frame of a conventional men's bicycle requires the rider to lift one leg up in order to mount. A Mama Chadi style bicycle uses a step through frame in which the upper part of the frame is dropped away so that a woman in a skirt can mount without difficulty. Another useful feature is a fender that keeps skirts from tangling in the rear wheel. The birth of the mamachari greatly expanded Japan's number of bicycle riders. Its ease of use made it an essential means of everyday transport, like commuting and running errands for everyone, not just women. This section sells electric bicycles. Ah. Japan's bicycle industry opened a new chapter with the rise of power assist bicycles. This was the world's first power assist bicycle. It was launched in 1993 for women needing a motorized boost to ride uphill while carrying young children or heavy items. This advantage came at a price five times more than an ordinary mama chari. But this revolutionary bicycle took the struggle out of going up slopes. Electric bicycles take many forms, but Japanese power assist two-wheelers that require at least some pedaling are categorized as bicycles, and the rider needs no special license. Most power assist bikes are for mothers with small children. Early models weighed 100 plus kilograms. If the rider didn't firmly plant her feet when stationary, that instability could be dangerous. This bicycle has small wheels and fat tires. That way, the ride is more comfortable and the rider sits lower. But because of the power assist, even if your legs are too low to pedal hard, you can still get up a hill. Wow. Yeah, I mean, with something like this, you'd want it to be Fairly secure, yeah. I mean, it's good to be able to have both feet on the ground. I can imagine, especially you've got a kid on the back, maybe in some cases one on the front as well, or who knows, a whole bunch of shopping in there or whatever. 
Yeah, that's, that's a sturdy machine, isn't it? Hi, I'm Matt Alt. The Mama Chari is a family-friendly workhorse of a bike. But did you know that all over Japan, they actually hold races for Mama Chari? That's exactly what I've come to check out today. In Miyagi Prefecture's Sugo, they're having a six-hour Mama Chari endurance race. Let's check it out. This race circuit is known for hosting motorcycle and car races. But today, Mama Chari enthusiasts will be cycling around and around a one-kilometer kart racing track for six hours. Hi, guys. Hi there. So, why are you participating in this race? We want to show people that these everyday practical bikes can really move. What's the best part about riding a Mama Chari? It's so light, not they're really heavy. Heavy, but with practical features for everyday commuting. The basket, the kickstand. And they're cheap. Yes, nothing compares to a Mama Chari. <laughs> Why are you participating in this race? Real road races are too hard. I'm in my 50s, and this race is great because even someone like me can still get into the winner's circle. It's a lot of fun. Hi there. Hi there. Are you guys a family? Yes. We do the race every year. The kids take part as well. And they always say they want to do it again. Hearing that makes us want to come back. Mama Chadi races are very popular in Japan these days. Events are held at race circuits around the country. Here at Sugo, this is the eighth year of Mama Chari racing. Why Mama Chari? It's easy for the whole family to take part. And bicycles are an eco-friendly form of racing. Can I participate? Of course. There are 49 teams in this year's race. Matt joins one. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Matt is overtaken by a middle-aged man. It's tough to keep going for six hours, and eventually Matt pulls out. But he's intrigued by the speed. What's the secret to riding a mama chaddy fast? I notice you guys and a lot of other guys are actually holding the handlebars. You're holding the basket. Your posture is super important. You have to stay low to get your speed up. Even on a Mama Chari? Oh, you've got to take a Mama Chari seriously. <laughs> Out of the 49 teams competing, the winners end up completing 199 laps in six hours. A team of children manages 22 laps. And there you have it. They hold races like this all across the country every year. And they're open to everyone. So next time you come to Japan, check it out, sign up, and take a ride. Until then, see you next time. Bicycles are great for all ages, from children to the elderly. And riders benefit from Japan's top-notch engineering. In recent years, Japanese bicycle technology has won global acclaim. At the Tour de France, the world's most prestigious cycling event, 70% of the bicycles contain parts made in Sakai. Many of the world's major bicycle makers manufacture only frames and source the rest of the parts from Japan. A key player in the market is this company, founded in 1921. Over the decades, it has grown into the world's largest manufacturer of bicycle parts.
the brand shot to fame with the 1973 Tour de France, when a bicycle featuring the company's parts competed in the greatest event in the world of cycling. Their parts were far lighter and more durable than conventional ones. Ever since, Japan's unmatched engineering excellence has set the pace for the global bicycle industry. We're stopping here. Up here? The Bicycle Museum Cycle Center. Okay. Let's go. All right. Wow, look at all these. You can see the amazing evolution of the bicycle. Wow, oh, the stretch limo. With five riders, it reached 49 kilometers per hour, setting a world record. That's English, template for the modern bike. Wow, I've never seen one of these before. Now let me show you some road racing bicycles. Oh, OK. So what have we got here? This bicycle was entered in the 1973 Tour de France, well over 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Try lifting it. Oh, it's, well, it's a lot lighter than I was expecting, actually. About 12 kilograms. OK. How, how does that compare with bikes now? OK, we'll try lifting this one. This bicycle won the Tour de France in 2012. Oh, <laughs> hey. Wow, that's really light. It's only seven kilograms. So this is made out of what, this frame? This is a carbon fibre frame. OK, OK. You've got the frame, which is very light. What about the, all the other different parts? That crank arm. Mm. It's a tube, hollow inside. Oh. Only Sakai manufacturers can make it like that. It has 11 sprockets at the back and two at the front. That makes it a 22 speed. And here's the Japanese engineering wizardry, a bike with computer control. What? This is a computer, onboard computer. Whoa. Okay. Here's the shifter. Move this and you shift to a higher gear or a lower gear. Ah, uh, it's all computer controlled. Yes. The key to winning a road race is to change gears quickly and accurately to suit the changing conditions. For example, a long flat stretch followed by a steep climb. The computer on this bicycle helps the rider switch smoothly and swiftly. And does that apply to to bicycles all over the world, or is, is it particularly like this in Japan? Italian and other manufacturers also have computerized shifters, but their performance is not stable. They won't shift 100% reliably, especially in rain or mud or on rocky ground, or they just break down. They don't have this world-class quality. So what are we going to see next? Next, we'll see a bicycle that incorporates the latest ideas. Oh, so this is the state-of-the-art thing, is it? The comfort bike. Just as the name suggests, mm. it's a bike that's very comfortable to ride. Mm. The gears, lights and suspension are all computer-controlled. You don't have to adjust any of them by hand. And this bicycle has no battery. It's self-powered by a dynamo in the front wheel. The electricity it generates powers the computer. The computer measures speed, and it downshifts automatically when you come to a hill or something. The chain switches between sprockets automatically. Oh, so this actually is automatic? Yes. Wow, OK. The bicycle also has rear air suspension, <laughs> front hydraulic suspension. It stiffens up on an uphill climb when your speed drops. That way, the frame won't wobble under heavy pedaling. But when you speed up enough, when you're going downhill, for example, the suspension softens up, and then you get a very easy, pleasant ride. So it's all renewable energy. Right. Where's this made? The parts come from Sakai. <laughs> OK, the mind boggles. Bicycles are big in Japan. 
But currently, Japan has a problem with cyclists who fail to observe rules and etiquette. Bicycle parking is one example. Many people ride their bicycle to a nearby train station or shopping area, then simply leave it on the street, where it impedes pedestrians. In a country where so many bicycles are used, indiscriminate bicycle parking is a real problem. Local authorities often clear bicycles away, but they also invest in parking facilities near stations and busy commercial areas. In areas where land for conventional bicycle parking is scarce, some high-tech facilities make use of space where it is available, underground. Another problem is where people ride bicycles. In a country without many dedicated cycling lanes, you'll often find bicycles threading their way past pedestrians. While there are relatively few collisions between bicycles and cars, there are lots of collisions between bicycles and pedestrians. A bicycle rider moving at speed and not paying attention is an increasingly common pattern in accidents. For a long time, violations by bicycles were overlooked in Japan. But now, a crackdown is underway. So let's take a ride through Sakai by bicycle. The law is quite unusual in Japan. Bicycles are allowed in places like this. Oh, yes. Places with this sign. Let's get going. OK. like riding on the pavement like that. There's too many people, they get really close. It's, 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 you just feel so kind of tense about it. It's not fun. Right. Um, I'd really rather not do it. I'm, so I'm surprised actually that they allow everybody to ride on the pavement in Japan the way they do. Pedestrians feel alarmed when bicycles pass close to them. That's why bicycles are required to go slow. But some people ride among pedestrians at the same speed they would ride on the street. That's very upsetting for people on foot. So here's the ideal situation. A dedicated bicycle lane. A space for cars, a space for bicycles, and a space for pedestrians. They're all clearly separated. OK. So let's try it. Let's give it a try. Oh, this is quite a good idea. Oh, OK. <laughs> this is where it gets pretty fast. Have the brakes on. Oh, a nice early summer afternoon with the sun on your back. That's nice. It really is very pleasant indeed. How did you like your bike ride? That's much, much better. I mean, you've got a whole dedicated lane just for bikes, so you don't have to worry about the cars, you don't have to worry about the pedestrians. You could just go at your own speed, do your own thing. A much more pleasant experience altogether. This is definitely the way to go. Great. How many of these are there all around Japan now? 
There are more and more bicycle lanes these days. Tokyo is planning to increase the number of dedicated lanes for bicycles for the 2020 Olympics. The situation is changing fast. OK, well, I certainly hope they do get a few more done because it's going to make life a lot more pleasant and a lot easier too for cyclists, in, in, especially in big cities like Tokyo. Mm. It makes riding much less stressful. Mm. Makes a big difference. Anyway, thank you very much. It's been a really good, pleasant day. Thank you. Shall we have one more downhill run? For good measure, just to end the day. <laughs> OK, let's go. The kimono is not just part of Japan's aesthetic heritage, it also reflects a long tradition of practical design. Next time, we explore the beautility of kimono.